Yeah, no, were you no, being no. Robert Shaw just then or Roy Scheider? I was being Robert Shaw. That's what I thought. All eyes. Yeah. Yeah. That, that, he's he the one that goes that. in the water. Yeah. <laughs> the cage goes in the water. Boom. Sharks in the water. Our shark. Boom, 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 boom. Copyright violation. YouTube just shut you down. Yeah. You just got canceled. For, for me going, for me. Yeah. For you going, boom, I, I can't, boom, I can't, boom. I can't beat box. No. <laughs> okay. Not that, not that John Williams specialty. That was a white boy beatbox right there. You just heard it. Did you know that Lauren Tarquinio went on a game show called Cinemaniacs? I think it was around 2006 or 2005 about uh, Jaws super fans. Really? Do you want to know who won that game show? Uh, Lauren Tarquinio? Yeah. Okay. Uh, why does he know so much about Jaws? It's just one of his favorite movies, and he just has he's read all the books and seen all the interviews and watched the L.A. Philharmonic play the music live. <laughs> well, what, was there? Any, he just loves it. Was there any questions where you would go, "Oh my God, he just answered that"? I'm more in love with this man than I've ever been. Oh yeah, yeah. I first felt I realized I was in love with him when one time I said randomly I was thinking of that show, "Give Me a Break," and I said. And I couldn't remember. I was like, who plays the dad again? And give me a break. And he immediately goes, Dolph Sweet. And I was like, I love you. I love you. Who knows that shit? That's a weird thing to say. Uh, and I love him. Mother. I do. So he, he, what he knows, he knows. And everything else he doesn't know. So, and he freely admits that. All right, we'll be Are you looking up Give Me a Break on IMDb? I'm, to see if it's Dolph you Sweet? know what, Anna? You know, you know, everything reminds me of a song. Give me a break. Uh, so at the end of the show, we're going to play. Rip Nell Carter, by the way. Not, wait, is it Nell Carter? Now I can't even remember what the names are. You reminded me of a song. Uh, okay. of, a, of a song. Everything reminds me of a song. So, it does. And I was able to post something up for the end of the show whenever we're off of. Um, oh, okay. So you're I not playing it now. No, I don't want to overwork. Okay. Or should but, we over? Let's overwork Bill tonight. You want to overwork him? I, I do, but can no, I give a quick I, yeah. I want to give a quick shout out slash success story to Jill at Dr. Stregan's office. I went to the dentist this morning. Hey, Jill. Hey, Jill. To see my girl, Jill. Yeah. For my periodontal. You know, I got to do the periodontal cleaning, which is more than every six months. I have to go every four months. Okay. Because when I eat sugars and grains, my teeth go bad. And so oh, you don't say many years. I know many years ago, before we even started this, I, they said, you have periodontal stuff and you have to come every four months. But now I actually, I don't even have to come every four months. Cause I like it. I just like having the tartar cleaned every four months. I feel like it's better than every six months, but what I've done, you know how they measure in between your teeth and they're like three, two, three, Three, two, three, yeah, yeah. Four, always, five, three. It always sounds like they're goofing around. It's like, yeah, I'm like, you don't know what tooth you're on. And then the other ladies over there punching in, in the thing. And you're like, you're not keeping track. But you know, hey, wait, you know how I know they're keeping they track? They are. Every now and then she'll go, wait, go back to 32. Yeah. Or something so like it's that. It's 14. And then they're like, yeah, I'm on 14. You're like, how do you know? Yeah, it's like, it's crazy. It's because they do it every day, all day long. And we're like, long. I'm like, I am. Like, they're made bamboozled. To up, and then she'll go, but go back to 12. And yeah. our, oh, ooh, they were well, so Vinny many years ago before we started this, I was getting like five, four, five and five is bad for gum receding, you know? Yeah. yeah. I still don't understand what the, what they're at. Maybe millimeters. I don't even know what they're measuring. But you know how they say, like, when you get long in the tooth, it's because when you get old, your gums recede and your teeth yeah, get longer, I, right? They don't even do millimeters on me anymore. They're just doing whole meters. <laughs> <laughs> you are the three, two, threes. Yeah. <laughs> yards and yards. So today they're doing the teeth and, and Susie comes in and they're like three, two, three, two, one, two, three, two, one, all the area codes, LA and New York area codes. Yeah. And I was thrilled because it's usually fours and fives on certain teeth. And there were no fours and fives. Yeah. With me, it would be six, one, six. It would be like Northern <laughs> New York. Right. You know, it'd be up in Buffalo. It, it's Napa. Yeah. So <laughs> seven Oh seven. So they're like, um, I just, if anybody doesn't believe me how different it is. So I have gone to the dentist after doing the holiday thing where you're letting it slip for a couple of weeks. Yeah. Yeah. 
and I get bad numbers. And so now I'm going on January 20th where I haven't had a bite of any sugar and grain since it, Christmas it, Eve. It changes that fast? I am telling you, it is insane how quickly your mouth reflects the rest of the health in your body and inflammation. Just well, Anna, don't, I, 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 don't, be, don't believe me. Try it and go to your dentist and see what happens. All right, here I have bad. I can get bad cavities. I have root canals. I have straight teeth. I never had to have braces, but I have bad teeth as far as cavities and things like that go like thin enamel and shit like that. And whenever I talk to people on the phones and I talk to a lot of people every week, um, the major things they'll tell me is my, you know, first off, they're mad about, you know, most people are mad. You know, they're mad at you mad. or at no, the they're mad because it's like my doctor told me once I was type type two diabetes, I would always be type two diabetes. I just have to learn to live with it. And now my A one C's are five and they were eleven at one time. I'm not even type two diabetes anymore. Why does my doctor not know this? And you do. And the answer is I don't know. They'll say my doctor told me that I can only uh, control my triglycerides with drugs. Uh, I was at 400 triglycerides. I'm now down. I, I average now it's 62. Yeah. 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 And why did my doctor tell me that? Why did you tell me that? But, but I don't know. Those are the normal things I hear. Here are the two or three that I hear from men and women. Guys will tell me, hey, man. And it's like, look, dude, I'm just, you know, I just got to tell you, you know, whenever they get into the look, dude, you know, you know where you I know got. you're about to get personal. Yeah, it's like uh, I, I don't know if anyone else has told you this, but uh, because in my mind, this is how every other dude talks. Gross! They sound awful. Know. They sound a little bit like Lonnie Beauchamp and Kurt Lapeer mixed together. <laughs> uh, I don't know if anyone else has told you this, but uh, my pecker's getting a lot harder again. I'm having sex Good. with my wife, and you know, Great. all of a sudden they they became really Midwestern. Yeah. Um, like Appalachian. Um, but, but all of a sudden they're going, uh, you know, I thought it was over with. And I'll go, how old are you? And they'll go, 43. You're like, it should 40, not be over with. 43. I'm 60. And Serena's like, you know, we st got stuff to beat me off with. I'm pretty sure she's got a crowbar next to the bed in case I try some funny stuff in the middle of the night. You know, she, you know, and, and by the way, the only thing it doesn't seem to correct is anything postmenopausal. <laughs> Those women are like, no, oh, I hate life. Mm -hmm. um, but everything else, you know, and the teeth, everyone, guys tell me about the, the pecker work teeth. again. People are telling me, I never thought, why am I running? I, I've never exercised in my life. And they'll say, by the way, I went to my dentist and they're going through my chart. And then they'll start talking back and forth with the technician or whoever that woman is that's right now on the 323, the 311, right. you know, and they'll go, well, wait, do we have the right chart here? Because all right. of a sudden, dentists will tell you once your gums recede, you're they done. Will never come back. I know. More than innocent. I am, I am proof right here that it can happen because it happened to me. The carnivores are recording four, even four, more. Four, five, four, four, five, four to two, one, two. Hello. And by the way, so here's a shout out for Jill. So I go in and she goes, I have to tell you, uh, since you were in here and you said you had the cookbooks, I got the cookbooks. I listened to the podcast. I uh, got the sauce. I made the recipe. And I got to tell you, it really made my morning. So shout out to Jill, because that was a nice thing to hear that somebody's it's listening. Not. It's just nice to meet somebody in person who listens to the work that we do. It's Jill I miss meeting people in person. Is she a smoke show? Yeah, she's great. Yeah. yeah maybe. When yeah, are you sitting here fantasizing about my dental hygienist? Yeah, kind of. Because they're always cute. They're, they're kind of like uh, the women that cut your hair. They're always a yeah. little crazy and really they hot. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think I don't think they're that crazy. But I just wanted to give a shout out and also a success story. And I want I want you guys to go to the dentist and see what happens. Go oh, to the dentist at the end of doing 60 days. No cheat bites and see what happens. Anna, Why not? Take Jill out for a drink one night. I'm not kidding about this. Take Jill out for a drink and start asking her about the weirdest shit she's ever pulled out from between people's teeth and go, uh, go on, go on. That would gross me out. Don't go to dinner. Go for drinks. <laughs> <laughs> I, 
I have, I don't, my pet peeve is short pieces of floss. I get a long piece of floss. I waste, I'm wasteful. I, I waste, yeah, I, I use about that much. I don't like repeating the floss. It grosses me out. No, I, and no, I know it's in my no. own mouth. I get that. I just need to have enough room to get it around my finger. I got a whole technique. Oh, I do a whole. I, and then one time Izzy ate the floss. And then she's we're out in the woods. And, and it's the just floss came out. I, well, it didn't come out. That was the problem. She was like, and a I'm like a magician with the scarf <laughs> because I insist on having the long floss. Yeah. <laughs> it was pretty horrendous. <laughs> We've had that with the dogs too. They'll get the oh, food. they we had it with a cat who ate the tinsel off the tree, and it was like, oh my god! And then they're howling. And folks, say, save me, get out tinsel. Me, as, please save me the uh, tweet. I get it. It can jam up and tie up their intestines. We don't mean for them to no, eat. I didn't it. feed. By the way, I keep the tr the bathroom trash can now in the bathtub because yeah. I'm because I the dog can't get to it. Gotta so have the I'm pop like, on it and all that stuff. Fonzo yeah. goes in for a snack. You never know he's going to find. I was literally like, I had, to, I had to have the long floss, didn't I? Couldn't just do a short piece of floss. When I blow, like, me yeah. out. Talk about being grossed out. Yank a three foot long piece of floss out of your dog's butt. You use that much floss in one setting? Three feet. I mean, what's my wingspan, you know? You do, you really do that? I do a really long, I do it like probably this long. This looks about two feet. Oh, and I do that and I thought I was overusing. No, 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 no. You got to I don't like repeating I gotta do two wraps around each finger. And yeah, yeah, I do the two wraps, but then I move it. Your teeth are that wide. You can you can move it up and down. You got about that much to work with. You can move no, it. No, 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 no. You're out of your mind. Okay. You're out of your mind. This is, you want to know how my brain works. That's how my brain works. You know or what? Doesn't work, I, need to start, I need to start myself a sauce company because you're making way too much money if you're using that much floss. <laughs> Listen, floss is an inexpensive um, luxury. Marie, I need your gravy recipe. <laughs> put it in a jug. It. Put it in a jug. I'll give it put to it, you. Put something on it. Um, Call it eat sad, happy, maybe. Eat crappy is more like a. Yeah. Oh, wow. You said that about Marie? No, I said that about you and your new sauce business. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to take you down. Okay, I'm, I'm going to take Marie. If I take Marie's sauce, you're done. You're done. No, you're done. You'll be done. No. I'll Why would call you it, say that? I, I would call it Marie sauce. M-A-W-R-I-E with a hyphen in the middle. <laughs> People be like, Maori? Maori? <laughs> Maori? I don't know the friend. They already have trouble with Ray. And I'll walk into the grocery store and I'll take a Sharpie and I'll put an X through it. <laughs> uh, Rayo's is not as good as yours. Not even, no, that's true. Not even close. Um, you're and safe. everybody loves Rayo's. And I'm telling you, try mine. Yeah. Tr and once you go Anna's, you get it. Dr. Rayo. That, it doesn't rhyme, but you won't. Um, Anna, okay. Can I ask you about this thing that, yeah, that I saw on the Internet? Sure. Somebody forwarded something to you that I know you didn't look at because you just forwarded it straight to me. And that's my way of knowing that you're not looking at it, but you're saying, hey, let's talk about this on the show. That's it. Right. So somebody sent something on Instagram to you and she wrote, I think it was a she. Oh, yeah. Well, I don't know. I saw day. this. At, if I'm assuming a gender, but I might not be. I saw this at Target today. My husband said I should send it to you. And it had a picture of a kid who looked like evil. Macaulay Culkin, like the bad kid, like the bully in the eighties movie about middle schoolers. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. And, it, and I click through the link and it takes me to sugar break. Sugar it has, break. It's, a, it's like a slick looking website. It looks good. You know, yeah. I'm always clocking what people are doing on their e-commerce websites. Yeah. Powerful support for healthy blood sugar and sugar cravings. Now at target CVS and Hy-Vee oh boy. shop adults shop kids. And so I look at it, I'm like, well, it looks like supplements. And then there's also like a, a thing you put on your tongue. Like, remember those Listerine strips? Yeah. Like, this one's called Sugar Break Resist. And you put it on your tongue and it says it blocks the sweet taste, disrupts reward mechanism and gives you minty fresh breath. So it is. It sounds like it is a Listerine breath strip. Wait a minute. I can use minty fresh breath. <laughs> Do you need to destroy the di disrupt the mechanism? Uh, which mechanism am I disrupting again? I'm um, not really sure what they're getting at. Can we get into the minutiae of what they're doing? 
I guess people they're they're kind of well reviewed. People like them. Okay, but what is it? I, I don't get what it is. It's, it's you put the strip on your tongue and it it's makes sugar crazy. Gymnema silvestra leaf extract. Okay. Other ingredients: sodi sure, sure. sodium alginate, cellulose fiber, stevia, natural peppermint flavor, tapioca starch, sorbitol, water, glycerin, sorbitan stearate. So basically, it's everything you would find in chewing gum. Oh, is that gum? It sounds like it just says gum. disrupts reward mechanism. How does that disrupt? You place it? it on the tongue at the first sign of a sugar craving. It blocks okay. the sweet taste. Resist blocks the oh the. the product is called resist sugar break resist resist blocks the sugar receptors for up to an hour curbs cravings go about your day with sweets off your mind okay guess what mm -hmm. it's not going to work well they have a facebook group let me see how i bet it's a huge facebook group too yeah That's, this is the thing that gets me i'm yeah, always like people want to believe every oh, no, it's 1200 people okay <laughs> we're bigger than you um <laughs> You know, Hold on, let me look at the kids. Uh, I want to look at the kids one because that obviously was advertising the kids one. Oh, they have the same products. Resist, stabilize, reduce. What does stabilize? Hold on. Do they have more than one product? That, that can't be. Yes. All one is resist. That's the that's the breath strip. Then there's gummies. Here we Real go. Stabilize is what it's called Ugh. for excess carbs and sugars. Mm. Stabilize mealtime carb and sugar blocker asterisk. Sugar blocker. What's in that? How do you block a sugar? And I like to and know. He, the, disc <laughs> the description is and it's again, even better, well reviewed than the strips. It has average four and a half stars out of five stars for your little carbotarians. These pre meal, easy to chew, delicious berry flavor gummies block excess carbs and sugars, helping to minimize sugar spikes and crashes free of sugar and unnecessary additives. OK, so go. I want you to read the ingredients on a sugar free sugar blocker. <laughs> I need to know how they're well, the, the main ingredient like science here. The main ingredient is white mulberry. Well, I'm sorry, white mulberry leaf extract. And then it says Reducose registered trademark. Which means that that's a bullshit name. That mean they're, they're, it means they're trying to buy like they're trying to own a herb. Like well, you can't own basil. So if I put basil in something, I can't call it uh, Anna's Basilica wait, 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 that registered other, trademark, that right? Other word they were using before that, the, before the trademark thing? white mulberry leaf extract. Uh, I'm going to look that up. Re Re Reducose, R E D U C O S E. Morris Alba is a Latin name. You said root or leaf? White mulberry leaf extract. Okay. Uh, doesn't seem to be any shortage of it. Uh, oh, so you could just buy it as a supplement, like from Jaro or something. Yeah, let's see what WebMD has to say about this stuff. Uh, da, 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 da. I don't trust everything WebMD does, but we, we'll give them a shot on this. Wait till you see the other ingredients that I read you. Oh man, it went away. Come on back. Here we go. Why can't I get this to come up? This must be bullshit because I can't get the product to come up. Well, All right, I feel here like we WebMD has so many ads on it now. You can't even like. White mulberry uh, is a shrub or a tree native to China. So it comes out of China, Anna. Just like everything else. Like <laughs> made in China. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it has a white colored fruit similar to blackberry. Huh? It's a white colored fruit similar to blackberry. But an un, uh, but with an unpleasant taste. So, oh, oh but, all right. So it has an unpleasant chemicals in white mulberry work similar to those medicines used in type two diabetes. So, oh. okay. So, it helps the body uh, keep blood sugar levels. In it. okay. So, what they're saying. So that's why they're using it is because it's a natural blood sugar regulator? Well, according to this, um, look, it's kind of like, uh, what, what's that drug they use to get your A1Cs down to like 7.5? Trulicity. Trulicity, and, but there's the other one that everyone's taking. Um, Zeljans. 
whatever they are. All every are- drug is either for type two diabetes or plaque psoriasis because we watch Muir every night and that's those are the two yeah. drug ads. And the bottom line is, is that they'll say, hey, you can lose 10 pounds by taking this drug and and lower your A1C is as low as 7.5. Okay, losing 10 pounds, whoop the fuck if you weigh 400 pounds. That's like throwing a, a wrench on the floor of a tool shed. You know, it, it just, it doesn't register. Um, but isn't that, aren't they just saying that because that's all they can legally promise? They can't promise anything. So they're telling you, take this drug and you will still be a type two diabetic. Right. Guess, guess what will get you away from being a type two diabetic? Cutting out sugars and grains altogether. We've so seen hundreds, if not thousands of people now on my website and people that write to me and people around the world, they're doing this and they're getting their A1Cs under 5.6, by the way, which is right at pre-diabetic. Once you get down to five, you're safe again. You're, you're way safe, right? But these people are saying with these drugs, hey, we'll get you down to 7.5. Guess what? Guess what never works as good as a drug? The natural thing. Ask every guy who's ever tried to take a steroid naturally. <laughs> Doesn't work. Never work. Or hormonal women who are like, oh, all you just take evening primrose. It'll take care of your PMS. Yeah, try that. Okay. It happens. Sure. You know, it's it's just not gonna work. It's not Nothing gonna wrong. work. I, I actually like supplements. I like them a lot, but this isn't anything that's gonna do anything for you. Well, no, but the thing is, is like if you're eating a bunch of sugar and then you're taking a gummy or feeding your kids a bunch of sugar and then giving them a gummy to be like, okay, well, we don't have to change anything about your diet. We're just going to give them the gummy. And I guess that'll take care of the sugar spikes and crashes. It's, it just seems nuts to me. It is. So, I mean, that's just like, so the other ingredients are fructo oligosaccharides, water, gelatin, lemon juice, concentrate, natural flavor, vegetable oil, coconut, canola, and carnauba leaf wax to prevent sticking, lactic acid, citric acid, colors from carrot, black currant, pectin derived from fruits, sugar from beets, stevia leaf extract. So it looks like it has four kinds of sugar in it. I'm looking or at four kinds of sweetener, I should say. Uh, da, 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 da. Egyptian. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And then they show kids just having fun and, you know, eating pizza and being happy. Um. I'm reading another thing that says that, you know, there's no study that shows where it actually, you know, so all you have to do is read down past where all the bullshit is on the internet, go to page two or three folks, and you'll see where there's no actual study that's showing that this stuff really does anything. So there you have it. It's not double blind. It's not peer reviewed. It's bullshit. As I suspected. Yeah, it doesn't take long, you know, to find I was able to figure that out while while Anna was ranting about it. So uh, well, I just listen, it's really hard to feed kids when they're picky eaters and all this stuff. And they, they're just pelted with it. And the outside world, I get it. But then it's like, it does seem crazy to then like, let's buy a gummy. Let's give them basically the equivalent of a candy to offset what's already <laughs> Crazy. Why, why you know what I mean? And, and, and by crazy, I had a noodle nugget child, so I don't want to get the cards and letters about like, you don't understand. Some kids will only eat pasta. I get it. I lived it. Well, the reason they'll only eat it is because that's what you're giving to them. Guess what, parents? Won't you parent a little bit? Every parent I've said, look, you know, let your kid eat the, the noodles and nuggets, as Anna says, but start moving them in a direction, moving them in a direction before and keep pulling out, putting more, pulling out before long, they're having a healthy diet. And guess what? If you put something in front of them one night and they won't eat it, fuck it. They don't have to eat. If they want to be defiant, they could try again tomorrow. That's, that's what my mom did. Look at me. I'm perfect. Look at you. You're perfect. Yeah. Nobody's better than me. You know, right. look, that was that it, was it, it will eventually work when I look at people like um, like that guy, Andy in Europe, he and his wife, the, the, the guy, Andy Reynolds, they had a kid that was having all these problems. They had yeah. no choice. They had to go and have the kid eat a certain way to, to fix. That's problem, true. Right? And, and you see uh, the guy that was in my first movie, uh, um, Abrams, right? Right. 
you know, they, they couldn't say, well, my kid's going to eat junk because he's a kid. No, the kid was having seizures around the clock. Right. He changed his diet. So I don't want to hear that you can't change your kid's diet. If it was, if it's life or limb, guess what you're going to be doing? You're going to be changing their diet. And guess what? Kind of is. What life was the movie, them. the documentary with the autistic kid who was having uh, seizures? And it was it was rough to watch because I, I understand how hard it is to parent a kid with special needs and they had to change the diet. And then finally they came to the other side. But it was a big standoff. And I know that like a friend of mine has a daughter with special needs and they they go through this a lot and they go through it, too, with the it's not just eating, too. It's like the constipation and all sorts of. And that movie gastrointestinal is issues. I think that movie's called Beyond Impossible. Ah, um, yes. And it's uh, that's a great that was, movie. That was the Jim Abrams movie, by the way. The You're, one I'm talking about with the seizures. Yeah, with the seizures. It was like the sugar pill or something like that. You and I watched. We talked about this podcast like yeah, four or five uh, years ago. Can, can you look at can you look up Jim Abrams um, movie about um, the key Abrams or Abrams Abramson um, is Abrams, but it's a B R Abrahams. Yeah, Abrahams is spelled that way. And uh, right. he, he did a movie. Uh, what's her name was the lead actress. Uh, one of the best actresses in the world. You know, Silkwood. What's her name? Uh, Meryl Streep. Yeah, I was gonna say Karen Carpenter, but you know who I'm talking about. <laughs> Mm -hmm. uh, I wish I could remember the name of that movie. Everyone should watch this movie. It's free, like on YouTube, by the way. You see it? I'm trying to find it. I'm at his Charlie Foundation site. Uh, see if I can find Maybe it. Maybe it's under Learn. There's all. By the way, this site is great. He's got all sorts of resources here if people want to learn about it. But I'm trying to find the actual movies. Maybe I'll just go to IMDb. Abrams. Uh, I keep forgetting my uh, keyboard still does not work. I'm yeah. Using an external keyboard because the meat juice is from last week. Just a follow up. I did ruin my computer, you guys. I had to order a new one. So I hope that that glimpse of the hanger steak was worth it. I need I hope to you guys all subscribe to my sub stack to make up for it. I, I need to go watch all of Jim Abrams movies because they're great. Airplane, Hot Shot. Wait, are you going to go walk without me, Lauren? Top Secret. Hot well, shot. We have another half hour. Yeah. The Naked Gun, Kentucky Fried Movie. God, he has so many great movies. Um, what was the one IMDb? Did hmm. you find it yet, Anna? No, I haven't found it. Are you still over there talking to your husband? Well, yeah, he wants he wants me to go on a walk, but we're podcasting. Look at him. Uh, He's gonna stand and wait. He's gonna stand there. I can't see him because tell him I'm looking up information. Tell him. I'm, Why don't you look at your screen and say uh, hello? Yeah, because I, I got a thing up. I can't see him right now. Um, uh, God, why can't we think of the name of that movie? It's why I had him in my movie. Yeah, I, you know the one I'm talking about. All right, I'll text you. Kind of busy. I'm busy right now. Well, this is great podcasting, Anna. I know, just extreme silence of us looking for information that the people should see this movie. Yeah, no, we got to find it. We got to find it. It's somewhere here. But I'm under his IMDb and it's not showing it. I know, that's the weird part. It's not in his IMDb. Um, I'm looking... Okay, this guy's got so many movies. I forgot he was such a big deal. Yeah, he was a big deal. I forgot about that, too. I don't know. Let's just let's move on. Get Lee on and I'll look it up while you get Lee on. Put and in then, put in Jim Abrams. I, I, I know. I, don't, I, I know. I know. OK. OK. Before we before we get Lee on, we got to find it. We're not okay. bringing Lee on until we find it. Do you want to go talk about Connor who asked about when to let a child start weight training? You said you had some thoughts on it on Twitter. Yeah. Which, by the way, I hope people understand when you ask like, a really involved question on Twitter that we may or may not get to it on the podcast, but I hope they don't expect answers on like tweets. Um, no, but I think they just want us to at least get the Cover message. It. And, um, well, we're talking about kids and eating sugar and stuff, so you might as well talk about kids and weightlifting. So let me look. I'll look up 
Jim Abraham's. All right, let's see. Uh, first Do No Harm is the name of the movie. Boom. First Do No Harm. We talked about it for an entire podcast episode. Yeah. Folks. Your, your mind is already gone. And now I'm getting to the age that you were when we started this thing. And now my mind is going and we're not going to remember anything. Yeah. But hey, I found it first. What do you think about the proper the proper age for children, them children to begin weightlifting? Huh? Well, it depends. It depends. Did he say how old his kid was? No, nope, he did not. He just well, reported you an article. And they said it was dangerous or something. OK, uh, whatever. You know, I, I've always said um, when you have kids doing you can't have them doing movements, you know, certain certain movements with heavy weight because their joints are just not formed yet. Uh, I always say, allow kids to do what they could do on their own without in other words, when I was a kid, we would climb trees, right? I know that's pretty much you, you would be put in jail if a parent lets a kid climb a tree nowadays, but we would climb trees and do all that kind of stuff. I mean, how else would you break an arm? Um, you know, when you do all that kind of stuff, whatever a kid can do on their own is fine. When you get them into a gym situation and you have them doing bench press and, and pull ups over and over and you get into repetitive stuff, you're going to end up because the, their, their soft tissue is not ready yet. Their bones are not ready. Yeah, you, they'll put on some muscle, but some of that muscle can cause deformation of joints and everything else, because if you're not building them up the right way, I mean, all kinds of problems can happen. So the question becomes when and how. Uh, look, I started really young, but even even with a guy like me, with Joe Bonadonna, who I was in there like I was like nine, he didn't let me that do. That seems much. too young. It was very young. It was very young. And look, look at me today. I'm all beat up, but most of it is football. Look, the bottom line is, Joe didn't have me doing high repetitive exercises. He would say, "All right, go over there and do some push-ups." Okay, now you can do some uh, anything body weight. Go see how many times you could do pull-ups, right? It wasn't like, hey, go crank out five sets of 10 pull-ups. It wasn't right, anything right. like that. All of that evolved from me hanging around and just going there every day and being around it and, you know, wanting to be more a part of it, right? Mm -hmm. um, by the time I was 11 or so, 12, I was pretty much into it. Mm, probably 12, I would say is, you know, good time. And again, at that, you don't want these kids doing heavy weights. You, you know, you want them to do, you know, repetition. You want them to do lighter weights. You know, some kids start running. We had that, that kid a few years ago who was a great runner. He wasn't even nine yet or eight. And, you know, this kid was breaking all kinds of records. And I'm sitting there going, mm, this is good. And I'm kind of excited about this. But can this continue? I mean, is this kid going to burn out? Uh, I had a long talk. Uh, with um, this woman, Teresa Strasser, who writes books. And uh, Teresa has two kids who plays baseball, you know, and it, we hear about these kids who, you, you know, now she goes, you know, my son's a really good pitcher. And, you know, they, they have league ball and they play one sport year round. What do you think of that? And my answer was, I don't like it. I don't like it. I, you know, I'm glad I got to play baseball, football, basketball, you know, just all of it, because it makes you a more well rounded athlete, you're not just doing one thing. I mean, look, Tommy John surgery used to be for guys who threw their arms out somewhere in the minor leagues or made it to the major leagues. And before you know it, their arms are shredded. And um, Dr. Job over at Curlin and Job, I'm pointing over near you, Anna. Um, you know, he was the guy who Point in West, up, I get it. He came up with the Tommy John surgery. You know, he was the one that came up with that, right? And he didn't name, he could have named it the, the Job surgery, but he named it after the pitcher who he fixed. That guy was a pro. You know, the, the, you know, the kids are now 12, 13, 14 getting Tommy John. Wow. Yeah. And it's because of overuse. And it's because these coaches in these leagues want these kids to, you know, they, they want to win so that other parents can send their kid, but the kids are washed up before they even get through high school. These kids are done. They're, 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 these kids are like cartridges to them. And the kids that end up making it all the way through are the ones that have an easier time than that. 
I don't know if you know this, but just the other day, and this is apropos to what we're talking about, a 36 or seven year old American woman, mother of two, ran the fastest female American record. She's an American record holder now in the mm -hmm. marathon. Right. Okay. It wasn't like she came out of nowhere. She was a runner in high school. She kind of ran through her life. You know, most of these runners, by the time they get to college, they're burnt. They're spent. They can't do anything. You know, um, we had that kid a few years ago, Ryan Hall, that was supposed to be the next great, uh, the, 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 the great white hope in the marathon guy never ended up doing anything. Right? Burnt out, burnt out Salazar, I guess burnt him out. I think he was with Salazar. I think he was with Nike. They, they just burn these guys out these girls out. This guy had the most promise in the world. If you want to look at all these kids, look, there's very few uh, Serena Williams's and, and, and uh, the sister, what's her name? What's Serena Williams? Uh, what's the other one's name, Anna? Venus. Venus. I'm your Venus. I better not sing because they might cut it off of you know, YouTube. You know, there's very few Serena and Venuses out there. There's, right. And look, I mean, you know, they, they made it through. Tiger Woods did great for a long time. And look what happens. Right. And we can look at these examples over and over. Uh, uh, Todd Marinovich in football, you know, his father made him this this football machine. The guy never did anything. You, know, you take someone like Tom Brady, barely made his high school team. Right. Barely ended up never really started in college and was the slowest guy that there's he finished like 99th or 95th or 195 in, in, in combines. He wasn't even really looked at. Right. Wow. The guy didn't burn out when he was 12. He's now the, the goat, the greatest of all time. And no one will ever beat what he's doing. Well, maybe someone will come along, but man, it's going to be a long day before someone beats what that guy's doing. Right. Yeah. But he's a guy who who became seasoned into it. He wasn't overworked as a kid. And when I see these kids getting overworked now with weights, you know, repetitive motion of weights. I'm somewhat a product of that, man. I, I got to be honest with you. It got me a college scholarship. But man, right after that, I had to get off of it. You know, I had I got on a bike. I started doing more aerobic activity. I couldn't keep doing what I was doing. I couldn't keep it going. Not not at that level. And by the way, I was one of those guys. You ever wonder where, you know, WWE goes to find new wrestlers? Mm -hmm. Go to colleges. Yeah. And they looked at a six foot tall Vinny who, you know, was pretty acrobatic and can move and was very muscular at the time and went, hey, you know, we could bring you into the camps. We could teach you how to do these moves. You could be one of the pretty boys of wrestling and all this kind of crap. <laughs> can you imagine me and Ric Flair? Do you, you and Randy Macho Man Savage? Yeah, but, you know, I wouldn't have made it. You know, think about Roddy it. Roddy Roddy Piper. I, I wouldn't have, I probably I wouldn't have I was too small. I wouldn't have made it through. I know? liked him when I was that's little. that's where they go to get wrestlers. They go find D1 football players who aren't going to the next level because they go, the, you know, you, you let's have, injure them more and have them do fake wrestling. Yeah, stunts. It's, it's just not a good thing. It's no, listen, this wrestling. happened uh, with friends of ours who we've known for years and their son was drafted in 2020 um, for the Mets. And I, I got to say, first of all, the video of watching that reveal because they put it on Instagram was probably one of the most, I watched it a hundred times. It was one of the most joyful things I've ever seen to watch this kid get drafted, you know? Yeah. And, um, but he did get, he's in the minors now because he got uh, injured. And, and it makes me wonder what happened. Great, great athlete, this kid. You know, I'm not going to mention the name. I'm sure people are going to figure it out. But um, I, uh, I was, um, in a restaurant, I ran into a woman and I noticed her last name. We started talking. I said, are you related to this athlete who I played ball with? And she said, yeah. And he ended up having a pretty good pro career, you know, a very seasoned pro career. And I always thought, man, the ones that went to the pros, man, they got it made and the whole thing. They make a lot of money overnight and then they can go off and do whatever they want because, and she goes, yeah, you know, he really had, you know, after pro ball, he really had trouble finding his way. And I was like, that guy, that, that guy that hung the moon, that guy that had it all. See, I think that's a way more common story. 
Yeah, it, it was. And I don't and I don't think they did. They, they, they are necessarily equipped. And if they get injured, they get spit out or or they let's say they have a good run and then but nobody's training anybody in financial planning and any of that stuff. So that there that becomes a whole nightmare. Yeah. And I don't know if this guy had money troubles or what, whatever. You know, I don't know. I don't get it. it. Is interesting. I, we got to get Leon. It's time. Well, I, I, I just sent him a message a few minutes ago while I was. Oh, OK, good. Sorry. See, I, okay. I can multitask like that. And I, I, I didn't I didn't see that coming 10 years yeah, ago. Yeah, maybe. yeah. <laughs> you. <laughs> <laughs> Half the time I'm writing back to Andy going, uh, if they think our vitamins suck, tell them to kiss my, you know. Yeah, that's not I won't. I'm, we're not gonna let you take care of customer service. Yeah, they, they keep me out of it. Um, <laughs> I bet they do. I want to say this. Do you know what the best olive oil on the planet is? Villa Capelli olive oil. Yeah, it is. All of you guys should get some. I love the three liter tin. And in fact, I'm going to order. In fact, I'm going to text Stephen right now because I'm going to get one. Um, if you go to villacapelli.com and you get that three liter tin, make sure you add some of the salt, some of the spices to it. Make sure that your order is well over a hundred bucks so that when you use the discount code VINNY, V-I-N-N-I-E, not with the win B-Y, you'll get 10% off your order each and every time. That's not a one-time discount. That's every time you order from that. It's like a permanent, it's like we get permanent discounted oil. Get the oil. Um, it's delicious. You're going to love it. Tonight, here's what I'm making. I'm taking some chicken wings and I'm dusting them with all kinds of herbs and spices. And then I'm going to drizzle the Villa Capelli over the chicken wings. And then I'm going to roast them in the oven. And then I'm going to take them out and then I'm going to eat them. And if they need any more moisture, which they shouldn't, because the Villa Capelli gets the wings nice and going. You know what I mean? Yeah. Oh, here we go with Lee. Use the discount code Vinny, V-I-N-N-I-E. You'll get 10% off your order each and every time. Oh my gosh. And with the cool background. <laughs> No, no, no. This is my real house. I just uh -huh. have that fire frozen because I've got secret powers. <laughs> He's a wizard, folks. Wait, wait is that he you, is yeah. at the Lee base? I wouldn't that's have right. I wouldn't have ever right. Is that so that's a fake background, right? Yeah, it's total fake. Yeah, you see, how do I get that, Anna? Look at my background. You have to download a picture and then you choose it as a virtual background. Oh wow. All right. <laughs> so, Hi Lee. Oh, this is my reward shirt. It's a two X. From 3X tall, which not because I'm tall, because I have a big fat belly. Uh, I'm down to 2X on this round two of uh, Less of Lee Journey. I love well, it. Hey, uh, we Great were talking job. about you before you came on <clears throat> a little while ago. Um, you, you were around at the beginning, right? I was. Episode 57. I just looked it up. <laughs> All right. So... Oh wow! That's how amazing. did you find? How did you find us at the beginning? Oh, it was gosh. even before the book came out, right? It was before the book, which, but because I wanted to do a little reminiscing, because I'm an OG fan. Back when you knew nothing about te about technology, that's right. Your big thing was to talk about Anna's chesticle area <laughs> every episode. I don't remember that, but go on. Oh, he has yeah, no recollection. My episode is like the first ten minutes, um, <laughs> and uh, you know, Anna had all the all the the computer knowledge, and you guys had nothing to sell. You were uh, prepping for the book, um, and I'm so proud of you. I'm so proud of both of you. And I just got uh, I got my uh, eat half uh, the Yay! arrived today. Aww. I got all three of the movies. Of course, I bought your book. Uh, um, I'm That's a big, awesome. Thank big you, man. Um, but I was like a sports fan. In other yeah. words, I don't play football. I just watch it on Sunday and I watch the talk shows and, and uh, I was a fan of low carb more than I was a practitioner. And I, and I lost <laughs> weight that year. I lost 80 pounds. Wow. But I did it, in one year? Uh, in 10 months, uh, actually. Wow. Even less. Uh, but I did it. I didn't do it in, in s and um, I was moving towards that. Right. So it's more of a Weight Watcher. Start where you are, make small, improved progress. So I knew where I wanted to go. But, you know, we had kids in the home at the time. They're now all grown. And I just and I knew about low carb from years before I had done it. And it's such a sharp, you know, stop eating everything you currently eat and eat new stuff. And I just I just wasn't prepared for that anyway. Yeah. This, so I lost all the weight. I got fit. I looked great. Eight years go by, life happens, the, teen, you know, the daughters become teenagers and all that. And I gained all of it back plus 20. Oh. So now, mm. uh, oh, plus now I'm a type 2 diabetic. 
Now I got arthritic knees. I'm 335. And um, I went to, I finally went to the diabetes specialist. My A1C was 11.2. Oh. For those who aren't familiar, diabetes starts at 6.5. Right. At six five, you're in trouble. At six five, your health is bad. At eleven two, you were almost double that. Yeah, yeah. it finally mm-hmm. clicked. Right, I had been diabetic for two years, and I kept thinking, "Oh, I, I'll just go, you know, NS and G, and I'll knock it out." But I just never did. Right, I, I took my metformin, I took my glipizide, and I, I picked my finger for about a month, and then I just forgot about it. So now it's eleven two. It scared the shit out of me because now I'm like. Oh, that blurry thing I'm having with my eyesight in the morning, that's diabetes. I'm going to go blind. Thing, yeah. 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 So that's scary. I instantly, I mean, it was just just like before I had a bad night in the hospital. That's what kicked off my first journey. And people call it keto. I call it keto, but really I practice in S and G. No sugars, no grains. I don't count anything. I don't count my macros. I don't count my calories. I don't even food log anymore. I, I did all the my fitness pal stuff before. But what you had taught, this is the reason I went through memory lane, Vinny, because I wanted you to know all that you had said the couple years that I, I listened to you like every week stuck in my in my brain. So I added fasting. That's not something that you preach too much, but uh, Jason Fung and his diabetes codes, I read that. But when it came to the diet part, I just knew, eat meat, eat fish, eat non-starcy veggies, and you don't have to worry about it. Right. And so that was April. By July, I got off all three of my diabetes meds, metformin, glipicide, and trulicity. In three months, Whoa. I got off all the meds. Three months more, I'm now officially in remission because my uh, A1C was 6'2 without any meds for three months. That's the new definition of, of remission. Great. It, it stayed below. Now, and that's not where I want to go. I want to get all the way down into normal. Yeah. Um, but uh, the main thing, and this is what I really like about what you teach, uh, Vinny. First of all, your book can only be one page. You know, <laughs> don't eat sugars, don't eat grains. Now, let me tell you about all the cool people I did training for. Yeah. <laughs> you know, that's, well, you know it's uh, funny you're saying all this. We were talking about all of this before you came on. We talked about the book. We talked about the fact that we knew you were a fan early on because we saw you on Twitter, you know, the Lee base. I mean, how yeah. do you forget that guy? And <laughs> you would talk to us every week and, and we, you yeah. would talk back and forth and um, you know, you were there for a long time. And then, you know, it's funny. I don't really notice when people go away. I understand. Yeah. You know, because they just, they slip away and, you know, because then more and more people come in and every night I, it's just a new plate of food. I'm like a dog with a bowl of food. <laughs> I just start eating again that night through Twitter. And then all of a sudden, years and years pass. And one day you appeared again. And I was like, oh, he's back. He's back. Or was he lurking? Bigger and better, (laughs) bigger and fatter than ever. (laughs) And so I had to catch up, right? Because, you know, I mean, I I got somewhere around here. I got my Vinny vitamins. Uh, uh, I knew you you branched out. I'm so happy for you. Um, But I didn't realize that you had broken your podcast into three, you know, three things, like ones with, with Anna, ones with uh, your business partner. And then you're, and so I had to catch up a little bit. Um, but yeah, it, but the, your simple message has never left my head. And so when I needed to get back on it, cause people, you know, I, I participate on various uh, forums and you know, when you have some success, people are like, how are you doing? How are you doing it? And I'm like, I don't count anything. I just, so if you if you just buy meat and veggies, because it starts with your shopping. Yeah. Right? And the reason why, you know, uh, I would say why I fell off the wagon or, or got distracted is that I never got to where I, I cleaned out the whole pantry. You know, I, we were just in a different phase of life. Now it's just the wife and I, the kids are grown. So yeah. we don't have to have snacks in the house for them. Not that we should have ever, but you know how it is. It, it is uh, easier when there's, it's just not in the house and you can't. Right. So, you know, I knew how to cook by then. Like all the lessons I learned over that period of time, they didn't just disappear. That's good. I hate that I'm having to redo, you know, I mean, I've lost 50 pounds, but I'm still fat as a whale. You know, I, I, yeah. I'm just about to crest into merely being obese. You know, so I'm still, you know, uh, they used to call it morbidly obese. I think they've 
politically corrected it now and call it extremely obese. But I still have a long way to go. So I hate that I'm having to retravel this, this, this ground. But all my lessons that I learned before apply. So I know how to cook. My wife knows how to cook. We know how to shop. Uh, uh, Lee, we can I ask to- you a question? Yeah, go ahead. Are you somebody who's hard on himself? I don't know. Uh, I, I'm pretty positive. Actually, I, I don't think I'm hard enough in the sense that I have such a. My that, would, that means, yes, you're somebody who's hard on yourself because well, you're going, inter- I'm not hard enough. I'm not myself. hard enough. I need to crank down on me. Well, my yeah. inner voice is very positive, right? I don't, That's great. I don't criticize right. myself much. So as I got fat, I didn't, oh, you're so fat, right? Because I'm positive. First of all, I don't look at myself that much, right? You know, I look at you. But once I have, once I get back on it, you know, like the first time I was in my mid forties, I'm in my mid fifties now. The first time was easy. I mean, that weight just flew off. I didn't do anything extreme. I wasn't like on a 500 calorie day. I was eating everything and just cutting it in half. That was how I started. Um, now I'm like fasting 18 hours a day. I'm only eating uh, uh, meats, fish, and, and veggies. And it's coming off, you know, five pounds a month. That, right? that's, that's, that's really about slow. right. Yeah. yeah. But for as hard as I'm working, that feels really slow. That's a very relatable feeling, by the way. Yeah. And because everybody is different and everyone will have a different thing that's right. happening. And so most of us are in that realm of like, it just comes off at a certain rate and there's nothing you can do to game the system to make it happen. And, and the, the, and the kiss of death is going, but 10 years ago I did the thing. And yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. And you have to really work hard not to have that. mind. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. And, you know, uh, we talk about that in the book. It, maybe it should have been a two page book because I talk about gaming the system. It's when right. people start seeing the way come off, they'll go, well, maybe I should double down on what I'm doing. And that's when they screw up. Right. Well, I, I think for, so here's where I get hard on myself. This is so, and normally I'm not, I, I didn't mean that normally I'm not, but once I start having success, that's when I feel the guilt because then it's like, okay, I wasn't born big boned. This isn't genetics at play. This is being, I have been irresponsible with my health, right? I have been negligent. Because I don't have a thyroid problem. I don't have, you know, some disease. I mean, di- I have diabetes. I tell people I have a consequence. I don't have a disease. Right. I have a consequence. I have the consequence to my to my uh, eating. And right. yes, the food's poison and, and all that in terms of processed food. But so that's when I get hard because I because well, I normally a very responsible person. And when it hits me. Lee, you're you're, so you're definitely a responsible person. I can right. tell you're a very intelligent, responsible person. Yeah. It's very obvious. And it's interesting because when people do fall off, I, I'm always like, it's OK, because you came back to it. And that's sometimes part of the process, because sometimes we think we have it. It's almost like the story of the millionaire who loses right. everything. And then he but no, he has no, the no, skills. No. You almost like you have to go through that bad thing to then really have it like congealed in your central nervous system because we're only as powerful as what our beliefs are. So it's like, I thought I had that locked in. Well, there was a missing piece because it happened again. And so then if you're looking backwards and going, well, now that I've realized that I'm definitely going to beat my past self up (laughs) for doing a thing. And it's like, you no need here you are and you're doing it. I'm not prone to beating myself up. Uh, and I want to share this part because I, I know people will relate to it. So about two weeks ago, I just gave in. I gave myself a good cry. I, and and Because I, I cried and I had a good 15 minute of just a grief and grieving over what I had allowed to happen. And then I put that That's aside. Amazing. And then I, and I move forward, you know. So I have that picture, the peak lead picture. Now I'm, I'm doing this, you know, I, I'm... Uh, and that picture became a picture of shame for me, right? Because wow. it was originally it was originally the victory. Yeah. And then as I gained the weight back, then it was a picture right. of shame. It was a reflection of something you felt yeah. you couldn't achieve again. And, yeah. And now it's just getting to the point where I'm re-embracing. Okay, I'm gonna get not only am I gonna get back to that guy, in the last couple of weeks, I finally because you know, you mentioned limiting beliefs, so that you touched on it, Anna. I realized that I had a limiting belief about how muscular I could get. Because see, I was a nerd growing up, right? And nerds and jocks were like two different species. And the jocks were in the gym. The jocks were saying no pain, no gain. And I went to the gym and lift the weights once and go, 
well, no pain, no pain. <laughs> you know, yeah. Like I don't belong here. I don't belong with those people. And so I've never even desired to have muscles. And I'm, I'm, I finally started turning the corner. There's a guy I follow on Twitter. He's in his 60s and he's muscular. He's not an Adonis. He's not Schwarzenegger. But I started thinking, why shouldn't that be me? You know, I love it. Limit. So now that's my goal because, you know, muscle is health. Right. And so I need to continue to lose the weight. The diabetes, yeah. that, that's my rear view. That's not this year. That was last year. I'm no longer a diabetic. I'm not going back there. You know, I'm still eating right because I have the rest of, of metabolic syndrome to heal myself from. I need to get mm-hmm. rid of all of the insulin resistance. I need to get rid of all the weight. But I also it have takes the some positive, time for sure. I have the positive thing. I'm going to get muscular. I'm going to have a V shape. Yes, and you can. Was, you absolutely can. We, I want you should come on my Monday clubhouses. I would love to hear. Do you have you ever yeah. been on one before? I have not. I, I've heard of Clubhouse, but I've never done it. So it's I'd be just happy. an audio app where we talk and check in. And it's just I do. I run the weekly one uh, on Mondays and Leona and Megan run the Thursday one. And just you just put it on your phone and you join in and you talk. And Vinny will oftentimes join us and yeah, talk I'll about stuff. And I, can, I, I can't pop in next Monday, though, Anna, because I'm doing okay. um, uh, we'll do Izzy's podcast. But in two weeks, I'll be on. Yeah, that'd and be great. I think Lee's story would be great. And by the way, Lee, just some suggestions for you. You should get a video of Brian's song. So the next time you're going to have a, a good cry. Yeah, that's the one. Go. That's That'll do it. Yeah, pop that in because it's the only legal song that a you know, I mean, I can't legal stand movies. cancer movies. <laughs> yeah, you watch that. You, you, when that movie's in, you're allowed as a dude to cry. Uh, also, something for Joey is another one of those yeah. movies. So you can have. I don't have the hang up. I, I cry at Kodak commercials. I, I am not uh, a guy that is uh, ashamed to cry, but um, I, I had to move from shame to to you know a positive vision, and I couldn't do that until I gave myself some honesty to grieve. I just, I just really felt I let God down. I let myself down. I let my family down. I just, cause I don't live in that space. So I don't have to, Oh Lee, you forgive yourself. No, I'm normally in my forgive myself phase. Right. But I had to get really honest and, and, and I have that moment and then put it behind me, you know, because yesterday's gone. I mean, I could be 450 pounds, right? Like yeah. I've never, I've never stopped getting fat. I'm either gaining weight or losing weight. I, since I was a kid, I don't know. I wasn't fat as a kid. It was like my mid-20s. But I've never experienced being a stable weight. So had I not gone through what I went through, not only would I not know all the lessons that I already know and I didn't have to relearn, you know, who knows how much I would have deteriorated, right? So yeah. even in my mid-50s, it's not too old to change. I know no. I'm talking to people that are in their 70s or in their 80s and they're diabetic and they're on the form and they're wondering what they can do. And I just know that their task is harder than me, right? I don't want to, like, like, one, I don't want to go blind. I already mentioned that. But two, right. I'm starting to, because I have the arthritic knees, that really limits me. And I could be that frail 70-year-old guy who, you know, two years ago I was walking with a cane because I had fallen in the winter oh, and wow. hurt myself. And even after the leg kind of healed, I was needing a cane to walk around. Of course, the doctors wanted to slice my knees off and give me new ones. And I didn't want to do that. Um, but you know, he, you know what he didn't say? Lose a hundred pounds, Lee. You won't. You might not need anything. I know that that always drives me crazy. You know, uh, my my good friend uh, Don Coddington. We talk about him a lot on the show. You know, it used to frustrate me. It's like Don, you have me at your fingertips. You you know what to do. You can probably run my podcast better than I do. You know everything. Why can't you do it? And the reason being was he says, I'm addicted to sugar. I'm just addicted. So he had to start treating sugar as if he was an addict. The same yeah. way someone would go through a 12 step program. He just had to cut sugar out altogether. And you talk about having that V shaped body. Don used to look like, you know, the, the Michelin man. He now has that V shaped body. He, Serena awesome. saw him and went, wow, yeah, she couldn't believe it. It's amazing what you can do. And Don is exactly my age. We were born probably, uh, I think, a month apart. Same age. So it, it could be done at any age. That That's the crazy part about all so of this. People can, like me didn't even, I mean, I would see, like, Vinny, your, your famous conch shell photo, right? Right. 
But when you were that Vinny, when you were supermodel Vinny, going to marry a real supermodel later on in your life, I would see pictures like people like you, and I couldn't, I mean, you could have been a different species. I didn't look at that and didn't envy it, didn't aspire to it, didn't think it could be me. I mean, it just like, what, whatever in high school, when I made that division between the nerds and the jocks in my little head, I never looked back. And part of me, because I, I trade on being smart. I mean, IT, you know, my, my whole life has been around my brain. Right. And it, I know it sounds weird to say it. You're like, oh, God, that guy's full of himself. But it'd be yeah. like a, being a no, beautiful no, no, woman. No. And go, oh, me? I'm not pretty. Um, but how stupid do I have to be to not value health? I mean, that's where I'm at now. That's the kicking that I'm doing now, which is you can't be smart and not value health. You know, because that's that's number one thing. It's amazing that you are that smart and you still had a blind spot. I think that's why you're you're so like befuddled by it. Like Uh, I'm a smart smart dude and I had a giant blind spot. And the smartest people in the world have the biggest problems. I've always said that I've I've worked with Fortune 500 company CEOs who can figure out everything except how to lose weight. You know, to your point, Lee, uh, last hour, I was talking to a guy that's coming up on the Saturday show, uh, Ed Fackler. And Ed was, you know, the guy had been 400 pounds at some point in his life. And he just ran 200 miles, right? Wow. In, in this, you, you have like a whole week, wow. you know, as long as you don't cash in your chips, you could keep running around the same one mile course. And he goes, I've lost 200 pounds. And I ran 200 miles. And I, I was like sitting there, just like, you know, couldn't believe it. And he said, well, geez, you've done all this incredible stuff on the bike and the whole thing. I said, yeah, but you don't understand. I'm built for that. My whole life has been that. You were this other guy. And in your 50s, you became that. Right. Right. I, I don't know if I have that kind of gumption. As a matter of fact, I'm pretty sure I don't have the kind of gumption. And, you and have that's on, why I'm going to teach Vinny. I'm going to teach Vinny how to play Dungeons and Dragons and oh God, and, and it's going to be great. <laughs> no, no, it's going to happen. I'm building so, a kayak right now, Lee, by the way. I thought you were going to say I'm building a level 10 rogue, but OK, go ahead. Whatever. It's kayak. OK, that's but the, fine. the thought of being disciplined, because, you know, again, I'm, at, I'm already at the stage where some people are looking at me going, gosh, I wish I had your willpower. Gosh, I wish you had your discipline. And I'm like, if I'm such a fount of willpower and discipline. How did I get morbidly obese? Not once, but twice. Right? Right. And, I, and I think that, that, again, that's one of those limiting things. You look at people who've done things and you think that they have mystic powers that you don't have. Not true. I yeah. do not feel motivation 99% of the time. I will cop to it once in a while. I get up and I'm just motivated. But each time I've started my tr- transitions was a one moment decision. I was okay. in a hospital nine years ago. Go ahead. No, no, this is what I wanted to say. If anybody's listening out there and you're thinking it's I just don't have the willpower. I'm not built that way. L- stop right now and go. That's a limited belief yes. right there is a limiting belief because everybody like Lee, who's ever been in this seat talking is has made a decision and that's all it is. And that's the distinction. You were really not white knuckling it. You were you made a decision. So. So I've been trying to, I've been noodling on, cause like, cause like, how do I answer that? Right. Because I don't know how to teach motivation because I don't think I have it. I don't know how to teach, uh, uh amazing discipline because I, I don't, you know, I don't have it in that way, but here's, here's one thing. You don't start the journey with everything you need to finish. it. You gain along the way. Yeah especially if you haven't like again i had nine years ago i went through you know things and so when i started this time i had a lot to draw from but let's say you didn't do it nine years ago so now you need to learn how to shop you need to learn how to cook you need to learn how to to exercise you need to learn how to uh, eat and not eat turn it into a hobby like Vinny is, is is embarking on building a canoe and we all hope he doesn't drown but <laughs> You know, he doesn't know how to do it, but he's doing it as a hobby. It's a fun thing to learn how to do something you've never done. But it's not even, it is fun, but it's not even like um, one of the things, and we talked about this, I could have bought the cedar strips, right? Already cut, but it was more important to go out and pick out the planks 
and and cut the strips myself, you know, each strip, because that's part of the process. In life, things don't show up in a kit, right? Like, no. you, life doesn't show up in a kit. Like you just said, you know, you don't have all the tools at the beginning. Since I started this project, I had to go out and buy a, a, a respirator and, and I got to learn how to cut wood. There's things I need to learn along the way in order to make this thing hopefully float. But you don't know what you don't know until you try. Right. Jimmy, let me be devil's advocate to that whole thing and say nine years ago, we didn't have Fitness Confidential. We didn't have Eat Happy and Eat Happy Too and a meal plan to go along with it. We didn't have your PDF that explained stuff. We yeah. didn't have your vitamins and supplements. We didn't have your coffee. We didn't have your nut butters. We didn't have the sauces. We didn't have a, a re I didn't have a website that had hundreds of free recipes and resources. We didn't have 2000 episodes of a podcast. We were just doing things in the moment and that stuff came up. So I'm saying like now we actually have, we've had time to build resources for people. So it is there. Yeah. It's just about making the choice. And we didn't rush any of it. Even with all of that, though, you still have to, like, again, someone who's new can be overwhelmed, even yeah. with what you just said, Anna. It's a lot and of So what I'm trying to, help, trying to help people understand is, like, you just have to make the first step. And then if, you, if the second day you fall off the wagon already, just start again. Right. And the very uh, next meal, start and, again. Yeah. And pick the big things. In other words, like, I'm at refining. I'm, I'm already at not just walking. Right. Yeah. But how do I exercise in a way to build muscle, not as a bodybuilder, but as someone who wants to build a bigger metabolic engine for, for health. And I'm like scared and I'm reading this book, watching this video. I'm, I'm getting a broader view of the land, landscape and see which one of them speaks to me a little bit more. Um, but the big broad things are in SNG, number one, you know, change the diet. And it's not, it, it is, I must say, I almost said it's not hard. It is hard, okay? But it's simple. There's a difference between easy and, you know, and simple. But the biggest thing is, is that the second one is, you know, uh, your, your exercise, doing any kind of activity, just doing those two things. And then as you go, you can, you know, get Anna's two uh, cookbooks, which of course I have, but you're almost a little too advanced for me. I love your videos, by the way, your videos bring your book to life. Cause I, I, I look at that and go, well, oh, crap, I don't have half of these ingredients. I don't have a chestnut roasting pan. Um, a chestnut roasting pan. That's, that's from, uh, Do you have one? There's a, there's a stand-up comedian that has uh, oh, okay. uh, John Panette. I don't know if you remember him. Oh, I, um, I love John Panette. By the, yeah. by the way, I want you to know I get a lot of one-star reviews because people say my recipes are too easy. So it's all relative. It was, it's where people are. I'm just it's saying, where people I, are. I know. They're like, she's dumb. Cook them in the videos, then they come alive to me. Yeah. Oh, for sure. Right. That's why um, I'm working towards a cooking show because I feel like that's an important piece of the information puzzle. But other people will be more prepared. I'm just... In other yeah. words, the problem isn't with your book. The problem is with where Lee Harrington is in his culinary journey. Absolutely. Um, but in other words, even though there's fine tuning and you might be talking to someone and they're at a, a fine tuning level of, you know, do you know, am I fasting 16, eight or 18, six or don't let everybody else's fine tuning dissuade you because the, the biggest, the biggest gains are from what you eat and from what you, what you do physically. And then you can fine tune after that. That's part of the. I again, couldn't I agree more. more. So and I, I work and on I, mindset. I work on on fitness. I work on uh, on uh, cooking. I work on uh, eating. I work on fasting. You know all these things. Um, uh, but I'm further along in my journey than someone just starting. That's why I want you to come on the clubhouse because I know you can help people. Plus you can use it as a check-in opportunity for yourself. Sure. I love it. It's, it's, it's the folks who really want to get inspiration, motivation. Just come join us. Hang absolutely. out. Absolutely Happy to Please, do that. Would you promise to come back on again? And, yeah, and absolutely. Keep us updated? Because number one, that's going to keep you on the straight and narrow. And number two, I, I love your enthusiasm and we want to have that enthusiasm back on the show again. Wouldn't you agree, Anna? Oh my God, a thousand percent. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yes, so, um, yes, a thousand times yes. All right, so well, hang on. I can't on, believe you're on episode 2000, you're past 2000s in your rear view mirror. You're on yeah. episode 2,400,072. Yeah, we, we just, just keep doing stuff, it. Yeah, I was all the way back to 57, so I had to have been listening for six months prior to that at least. Wow, uh, 57 was uh, college football. I love game. that what you've done, even you guys give away 
the the store, right? I mean, yeah. you went on to make make businesses and, and you deserve it. And I wish you all the success. But fundamentally, you guys have been giving away the most valuable thing, which is th this knowledge that if you just cut out the processed garbage and eat real whole foods, your health will transform and it will. And it's like, it is worth it. You just stop worrying, stop. I'm, gonna, I'm doing a little, I'm gonna preach a little bit to your, to your audience. Stop complaining about pasta. Stop moaning about this bread or that dessert. Seriously, grow yeah. up. It's time to eat like an adult. I'm saying this is, is to myself as well, but you can't just be bemoaning. Can I eat? The, no, start over. Meat, fish, non-starcy veggies. You know, all you got to do is grill, saute, bake. I throw it in sous vide. You know, there's like five techniques. And then it's the same thing just with the different protein. Yeah. You know, Hello, really, this is what I've been hard. saying. Yeah. 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 But, it's but not that hard. There, if you like, but what I like oatmeal for breakfast. I was, so, you know, I like everything too. I like sleeping with other women. Serena just doesn't oh. go for it. You know, like, <laughs> you know, so you got, you know, it's like, all right, well, I want to be with Serena. I guess I can't sleep with other women. That's why Anna's been safe all this time. Folks, <laughs> if you like what's going on here, you know what to do. We all go shopping on Amazon. Uh, before you go to Amazon, as Lee just said, look, we give we give it all away for free. The way you can help out, the way we keep the show free is that you guys go to uh, VinnyTotters.com before you go to Amazon. It puts coal on the fire, gets my train down the track. Also, um, <clears throat> uh, way, between, go on. Way, just on that, I, I just come up with some. I'm going to do. I'm going to tell your your people as well, Vinny. You just don't know technology enough. True. Take that link from his website and make it a icon on your iPhone. So you just click that and you go to it. Cause I would never remember. I shopped, I bought 392 orders on Amazon last year and didn't go to Vinny Tortorich at all. Because oh. I keep forgetting. I keep sure, forgetting. Drop this guy, drop this guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I keep screw forgetting him, to do that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to that link and I'm gonna save it as, as an app on my iPhone so that I just click that. <laughs> and then I go there because I'll remember to do that. You didn't even know you could do that. So, yeah. do so what Lee just thank, said. thank you. Lee, Lee just made us millionaires. Thank you, buddy. Yes. Um, yeah, we're rich. You know, look, the, yeah, all, all of those more had I done that earlier. I know, you know right? Thanks, Amazon. Every, every dollar counts to keep this show free. And also, Anna vicino has got stuff out there. She's got Eat Happy Kitchen. That's where you can get all the marinaras. Lee was just showing his right there. And, and look at that cute packaging. Uh, you can also get the books Eat Happy and Eat Happy Too. She spelled two wrong. It's T O O M. You know, so go look up T O. -O. Uh, so go check out everything Anna Vicino is doing. Go check her out on Clubhouse tonight, Monday night. At what time, Anna? 5 p.m. Pacific, 8 p.m. Eastern. We'd go for an hour. Come check in. Let me hear your voice. Or you can just be a creepy stalker and hang out down in the crowd. That's fine, too. I love looking at your profile pic. Also, um, you can find Lee on Twitter. Uh, he's at the Lee base. So you can go check him out. Uh, Anna, I was going to play a different and, song. Uh, Lessoflee.wordpress.com. That's my yeah. Lessoflee.wordpress.com. Yeah, there's less. Are, are you, you're tracking your journey there? Yeah. Great. Love it. All right, I was going to play a different song by the group Sweet because Anna mentioned the word sweet earlier on the show, but Golf sweet. Uh, th this goes out to Bill Meadows because he, sa he sent me a text during this show. He so, said you better not be playing any songs during the show. Well, he's going to have to cut this out of the uh, the the end of uh, the, the thing because I want to keep Lee up until, you know, after the show. So, Bill, you're going to have to cut this out, but this is for you, buddy, on behalf of... Lee Harrington and Anna Vicino. My name is Vinny Tortorich. Put life into living and do it with Donna Summers.